Hi everybody, so today is, well technically, yeah it is, it's December 15th, um, I'm recording this around 1.09 at night because apparently I don't sleep. Um, I do have a little headset on today because it is very late and I don't want to wake anybody up, but the question I have today is, oh it's, um, it's another vegan question. I was asked by someone about protein, which a lot of the times people ask in a like very condescending, but a lot of the times people are genuinely curious. They just want to know how do you get your protein? How do you get enough protein? Um, because a lot of people have it in their minds that protein only is from animal products or primarily um, meat animal products, and it's completely not true. Um, there are many, many, many forms of really good, high-quality proteins. Um, it, well, there's some people who, who are just afraid of soy for whatever reason, even though um, organic soy has been shown to reduce the risk of breast cancer. Um, and what's interestingly enough is that Most of the animal products people eat technically do have soy in them, either because they're part of the ingredients or um, because the animal was fed soy. So, I mean, you're still eating soy most likely. Uh, but if you like have an allergy to soy, there's plenty of other things that you know don't have soy in them. And my computer's being very strange right now. But, for example, uh, lentils have a lot of protein, um, spinach has a lot of protein, broccoli, um, beans in general, chickpeas, as I said before, soy, um, quinoa is a good one, seitan if you're not uh, a celiac or gluten intolerant, it's basically pure gluten and it has a lot of protein. Uh, protein in it. Uh, rice has a lot of protein. Peas have a lot of protein. Um, I'm trying to think. The point is, like, those are the ones in th that are really high in protein. But if you're eating enough food, and I mean, there's, that could be a whole other topic if people are eating enough food. But if you're eating enough food, um, enough technically enough calories um, for your body, and your activity level, um, you're gonna get enough protein. It doesn't. It, it, you're gonna get enough protein that your body can run on. Plenty, plenty of people have a low protein diet because they have a high, high carb diet, and a lot of those people would do like 10% or 15% protein. So 15 or 10% of their calories is protein, and they do fine on it. There are plenty of bodybuilders that are actually high carb and they're not focused on protein at all. Um, that's because when the body goes into excess protein, a lot of the times it gets, it, it becomes weight instead of actual muscle. It'll become like fat or weight or something, you know, on your body. I know for me, if I go high protein, high calorie and high protein, I gain weight and it's not fun because, I mean, it's, just, it's not my goal to gain weight. If I was trying to bulk up, sure, that would make sense. But I don't think I've ever in my life purposely tried to bulk up. Um... And people do mention the whole protein deficiency. You have to be basically starving to be protein deficient. Like, your body is basically breaking down at that point in order to be protein deficient. So that, that gets thrown around way too easily. And most people um, who are eating enough, and I'm just going to throw a number out there, 900 to 1,000 calories a day is not enough for most people, <laughs> you especially if you're a grown adult. Um, I remember when I first went vegan, which actually was eating probably the healthiest I was eating, and I felt the best. I was low protein, low fat, high carb, and I was probably averaging anywhere from three to 4,000 calories a day, and I wasn't really working out, and I know I lost like 16 to 20 pounds within like four months very easily without any real effort and I was eating as much as I wanted. Now that's not 
saying that everybody can do that because everybody has a different body type or um, metabolism. They had different, you know, histories before they ate like that or how they changed. But the whole point of this video is, yeah, you can get protein on a vegan diet. You can be a high protein vegan. You can be a low protein vegan. It, it doesn't really matter if you, whichever way you want to go, whichever way your body wants to go, you can choose one and go that way. Um, so it's not really a problem at all. I know people think it is. And there's this really good book that discusses um, the, the issues around protein and how we became like a protein centralized, like obsessed culture, I guess. Um, it's called Protein Proteinaholic by Dr. Garth. What is his full name? Let me look that up, actually, because I want to say... Actually, I'll put the link down below, but I don't, don't want to look it up, so... Let me just look it up. Um, Dr. Garth, why can't I remember his full name right now? It's so weird. Garth Davis, yes. So Dr. Garth Davis wrote Proteinaholic. He's one of the doctors that I follow, um, along with Dr. Neil Barnard and uh, Dr. Michael Greger. And Dr. Neil Barnard, I actually, he's probably the first doctor I read into because I read, I, I have, I own, um, how to reverse, how to reverse diabetes. Oh my gosh, I'm blanking on like everything. It's one o'clock in the morning. Give me a break. Um, uh, Dr. Neil Barnard. Oh, do, 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 do. First book I read. Dr. Neil Barnard's program for reversing diabetes. And now he will go into different diabetes in there, um, obviously, because you it's almost impossible to completely reverse type 1. I'm not saying it isn't, it's just very difficult. Um, but it's mostly for type 2 or any other like kind of flare-up type of diabetes. Um, but that's because of him, I found Dr. Greger, and Dr. Greger I ended up finding Garth at Garth. Did I just make him a name? No, I didn't. Dr. Uh, Davis. And so Proteinaholic is a really good book if you're looking into that. And then if, you, if, if you're if you curious about, because most of the time, not most of the time, a lot of the time um, when people ask about protein and vegan diet is because they're worried about not getting muscles. Well, then just look at some vegan bodybuilders that are high carb and you're going to see that it's possible to do it without a whole bunch of protein. But as I said before earlier in the video, if you want a high protein diet for whatever reason, um, you can do it on a vegan diet. You, it's, it's not, it's not too difficult. Um, especially because there's actually a lot of vegan protein replacements, mostly because people think that vegans don't get protein. But yeah, I'm personally happier with high carb. And no, I'm not saying that I sit around and eat donuts all day, which I probably would, but I wouldn't consider that. I wouldn't consider eating donuts, for example, or something like that. Like high carb. That's that's a junk food. Junk food vegan. And that's totally fine too if you want to do that. I really don't care how you eat as a vegan. Don't care at all. It's like I'm I help run a, a vegan group and we're very friendly to new vegans. And I posted the group, I believe, two videos ago. Um, I'll post it again. Though we have a big rule in that group and then another vegan group that I help run actually I think like three of the groups that I run we have like similar rules is no food shaming as long as you're not eating animal products eat whatever you want as long as you're eating ethically eat whatever you want um but that was just my short quick answer of how do I get my protein well I just eat enough food unlike today well no 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 actually I had lentil soup Two cups of lentil soup. So I did, I did, I have a chapstick in my hand. Um, I'm just rambling, so I'm going to turn off this video now. Because apparently I'm losing my mind today. But I will be back tomorrow on the 16th. Um, and I'll probably answer that question that I think I mentioned I was going to answer yesterday. That one is going to probably be a little long, and it's probably going to be a little rambly just because it's a very complicated question. And then I have some other deeper questions to answer and I just haven't haven't had it haven't been in the mood to answer them. Just have it. Like there's a question about if you were given twenty twenty thousand dollars and you can give you had to give it all away but couldn't give it all to one place, where would you go? Let me think about that. I don't know. Um 
I can think of a few places, but I don't know. There's a lot of interesting questions I'm getting to, and yeah. If you have any questions, let me know. But that's all I got today. So yeah.